بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد uh, Dear respective brothers and sisters this issue that has occurred uh, that I would like to inshallah shed more light on it which is in regards to do we blaze and advise or refute the oppressive ruler openly or is it from the way of Ahl Sunnah to advise them privately. What does Al-Islam, what does the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say in regards to this topic? And what does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say in his book? This is what we want to speak about today. Why? Because this has become a very big issue amongst the people. It has become a very big issue amongst the people. You find, uh, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us all, maybe some of our youth when they see oppressive rulers, or when they see some of these umara in the lands of the Muslimin doing bad things, they come out openly, they do mudahara, they do protests, and they do kind of all kinds of, uh, and they say all kinds of things. You find them in maybe Britain uh, coming on the manabir, on the pulpit, on a Friday, Jum'ah, making dua against them, cursing them openly in front of the people, uh, and uh, refuting them and things like that. So I just want to clarify what Al-Islam and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in regards to this issue and how the Salaf, they dealt with situations like this. And what the consequences of going against the Walatul Umur, these Islamic or these Muslim rulers in the Muslim lands, uh, and what the consequences are and what it can lead to. Firstly, it is not from the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that a person openly comes out and starts refuting or blazing these rulers wherever you are or even advising them openly on a day on the Yawm al-Jum'ah simply because of some of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the first hadith that was narrated by Imam Ahmad when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Man arada an yansaha li sultanin bi amrin whoever wants to advise the ruler with any affair فَلَا يَبْدِي لَهُ عَلَانِيَةً وَلَكِنْ لِيَأْخُذْ بِيَدِهِ Then let him not do this openly and let him take him by the hand. فَيَخْلُوا بِهِ And let this person seclude himself with this ruler. فَإِنْ قَبِلَ مِنْهُ فَذَاكَ وَإِلَّا كَانَ قَدْ أَدَّى أَلَّذِي عَلَيْهِ And if he accepts, then that's that. And if he doesn't, this person has fulfilled his obligation. And this hadith was graded as sahih by Imam al-Albani rahmatullahi alayh in his kitab Silsilati al-Sahiha. Here you find clear indication that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised the Muslimin and advised his companions that if this situation ever occurs, you wanting to advise a ruler. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam kept a general. He said a sultan. Whoever wants to advise him in any affair, then let this person grab him by the hand and advise him privately. It is not from the way of Ahlul Sunnah like you might see a lot, especially in these places that we're in. On a Friday, Jum'ah, you come out blazing and you come out exposing these rulers. Why? Because this could lead to the people having adawa enmity and hatred for these rulers and then going out against them and then a bigger fitna occurs in this whole issue. Some people they might use as an excuse and also as proof what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in another hadith of the jihad. The best type of jihad Kalimatul Haq in the Sultan in Jair. Speaking the truth or saying words of Haq against an oppressive ruler or in the Sultan in Jair. You find a lot of these people they've taken this hadith out of context. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says Kalimatul Haq in the Sultan in Jair which is in conjunction to the first hadith that we mentioned. Rather it's a proof against them not for them. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the word in the Sultan in Jair at the oppressive ruler. So some of the ulama of al-Islam, what did they say? They said that a person should do this when he is with the Sultan. The Prophet never said, Kalimatul Haq, 
يعني عند المنابر وعند الناس في يوم الجمعة speaking the truth against him at a يوم الجمعة rather he said عند سلطان جائر at the oppressive ruler and those that know the Arabic language it wouldn't be a big problem or it's not rocket science for them to understand what this word عند means so the intended purpose here is that you speak the truth, you advise him and you enjoin the good and forbid the, feeble, uh, the, the evil while you are with this oppressive ruler. So what do the Salaf, what do the pious predecessors say about this whole issue? And how does a person go about this whole issue when there's an oppressive ruler in place or amongst the Muslimin? You find Fadil ibn, ibn Iyad who was from the Kibar Tabi'een, the major of the Tabi'een. And the Tabi'een are those who met the Sahaba and they believed in Islam. And they saw them and they befriended the Sahaba. طيب, Fudayl ibn Iyad, he said, لو كان عندي دعاء مستجابا لصرفته للأمير. If I had one dua that I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept, I would have made dua for the Amir. Most of us, we would make dua to get maybe a nice car, to have a few houses, and to get maybe the enjoyment of this dunya. Here the Salaf, they would make dua for the Amir. And likewise, Imam Ahmad said the same thing. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhim ajma'in. Then he said, لَأَنَ إِذَا صَلَحَ الْأَمِيرِ صلح العباد والبلاد because if the Amir becomes good the people around him they become good and the lands become good as well here the Salaf they would make dua for the Amir not dua against them you find that it's very common that on Yawm al Jum'ah some people that, that have hatred and enmity to these Umara they start making dua against them and this is not from the way of the Salaf and the way of Ahlul Sunnah the Salaf, they would make dua for them, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide them. Because imagine now, you make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you stand up on the last part of the night, the last third of the night, when our, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ يَدْعُونِي فَأَسْتَجِبْ لَهُ وَمَنْ يَسْأَلُونِي فَأَعْطِي Whoever invokes me, I will give him, and whoever asks me, I will give him. Here the Prophet ﷺ is saying in the Hadith Al-Qudzi, قال الله تبارك وتعالى ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى كل ليلة إلى سماء الدنيا حين يبقى ثلث الليل It's not actually a Hadith Al-Qudzi but it's the Prophet ﷺ saying that the Prophet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala comes down to the last heaven. He says من يدعوني فاستجيب له Whoever asks me shall let me give him you make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of this Allah azza wa accepts your dua and because of this the Amir becomes good and everything else becomes good. And those that make dua against him, what do they expect? Do they expect the Amir to become better? Because this is not the case. The more dua you make against an oppressed or oppressive person, it's only most like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna torment and punish this person because if someone now is oppressing and the oppressed one makes dua against this person what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say فَاتَّقِي دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْرُمْ فَإِنَّ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ Fear the invocation of the oppressive, root, oppressive one for indeed there's no barrier and there's no hijab there's no screen between this person's dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive this person or basically accept his dua straight away so this is the danger of this issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَدْعُ الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَى بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who are hasty in dua and says that these people are ajula. They are very, very hasty. Hasty in what they do. And Imam al-Barbahari, he said, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ رَجُلًا يَدْعُ عَلَى السُّلْطَانِ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَاحِبُ هَوَى if you find someone making dua against the ruler, know that this person is a person of desires. And if you see someone making dua, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ رَجُلًا يَدْعُ لِلسُلْطَانِ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَاحِبَ السُنَّةِ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ And if you see a person making dua for the sultan, 
for the Amir, the ruler, then know that this person is a person of Sunnah. A person or this ruler can be oppressive. He can have dhalalat, he can be adhal, mudil, oppressive, jair. And it is not correct that a person defends him upon this issue. You don't fall into both extremes. Naam, you don't, adv you don't go against him at the same time, you don't defend this person upon his dhalalat. Why? Because this goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَلَا تُجَادِلْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ Do not dispute for those that oppress themselves. يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ You don't fall into both extremes. Rather, you stay balanced in the whole issue. He could be oppressive. He could be doing all kinds of things. And he could have all kinds of misguidances with him. By the same time, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He guides him. You don't go against him. You speak the truth and you advise him when you're with him. And at the same time, you do not defend him on his batil. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُجَادِلْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَمْ You don't fall into both extremes. So the other issue is, how do we deal with an oppressive ruler? Do we make mudaharat? Do we protest? Do we go against them? Do we fight against them? If you contemplate now the situation of the lands of the Muslimin and what's happened in recent years, that which they call the Thawra al rabiah the spring revolution or something like that, that went, that took place in Yemen, also in Egypt, in Libya and all these other places. What were the consequences of these things that the people they did when they went out? Firstly, there's a principle in Usul. أن لا إنكار المنكر إذا أدى إلى ما هو أنكر من That you don't Try to change an evil if this, or if you changing this evil is going to lead to a bigger evil. And this principle has been extract, extracted from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهُ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And do not curse those deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these people that worship them are going to be cursing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though it's permissible to clarify the battle of these deities and also speak badly about them and clarify to the Muslimin and to curse and things like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said not to do this. Why? Because this is going to lead to them cursing Allah azza wa jal, which is a bigger evil. And even though these rulers were oppressive, like people claim, Let's just say they are the most oppressive rulers that you'll find in this world at this very moment. In these Arab countries, when the people went out. What did it lead to? It led to bloodshed. It led to all kinds of problems. It led to the whole uh, place turning upside down. People fearing for their safety and etc. How, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advise the Muslimin regarding this? One time Hudayf ibn al-Yamani the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, أَعَاذَكَ اللَّهُ مِنْ إِمَارَةِ السُّفَهَاءِ May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect you from the leadership of the Sufaha, the fools. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say regarding this whole issue? Hudayfa ibn Imani said to him, فَمَاذَا تَأْمُرُنَا Ya Rasulullah, what do you order us to do? What shall we do in this situation? He said to him, سيكون أمراء بعدي لا يقتدون بهدي ولا يستنون بسنتي. They will be after me rulers that don't take my way as a way and they do not take my guidance. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said قلوبهم كخلوب الشياطين في جثمان الإنس. Their hearts are like the hearts of the shayatin in the body of an ins. في جثمان الإنس. So the Prophet Sallallahu said in the end of the hadith, وَإِن ضُرِبَ ظَهْرُكْ وَأُخِذَ مَالُكْ فَاسْمَعْ وَأَطِعْ If he beats your back and takes your wealth, then listen and obey. The hadith is in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Hudayf ibn al-Yamani radiyallahu anh. There is no doubt with, the, with regards to the authenticity of this hadith. It is in Sahih Muslim. 
And we all know that Sahih Muslim and Sahih Al-Bukhari are the most authentic books after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that their hearts are going to be the, the hearts of the shayateen. He brought us the worst example. And at the same time he told us to be patient and even they beat our backs and take our off to be patient. To listen and obey. Why are we hasty to declaring or to saying that these leaders are kuffar? You find many that jump to the conclusion these, yani, one plus one is two. This person now has uh, yeah, ruled by other than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a kafir. Straight away. Even though sometimes the issue might not be clear. And there's conditions, there's shurud, there's rules and conditions, the regulation regarding making someone a kafir or declaring him to be a kafir. Why don't we wait until the issue is clear cut? Ubad ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, the hadith which was in, uh, narrated by Imam Ahmad and Muslim, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi, he said, Bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sam'i wa ta'a, fil usri wal yusr, fil manshati wal makra. We sought our oath of allegiance to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hard times and likewise in easy times. وَعَلَىٰ أَثْرَةٍ عَلَيْنَا And also, when there's greed towards us. وَأَنْ لَا نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرَ أَهْلَىٰ إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَوْا كُفْرًا بَوَاحًا عِنْدَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي بُرْهَانٍ And not to topple the ruler until we see clear-cut kufr, infidelity. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said clear-cut kufr. We have the ulama that can clarify to us when this emir or when this ruler has become a kafir or when he has disbelieved or when he has left the fold of Islam. Not everybody to go jumping up and down on the bandwagon straight away, jumping to the conclusion this person is a kafir, this person is this, this person is that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوَ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى رَسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ and when a public fear or a public safety comes to these people, they begin to announce it. وَلَوْ رَدُّوا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ And if only they went back to the Prophet ﷺ and those of the ulama, those scholars. The importance now we understand from this ayah of going back to the scholars, especially in these big affairs. These big affairs. How many people have I met from Egypt and also Libya and also Yemen? They say we prefer that our country was in the situation when the oppressive ruler was there or in charge of it. Why? Because there's no am now. There's no security. People are in destruction. They don't know what to do. Someone could walk into the house tomorrow and cause all kinds of problems, steal their house and they can't do nothing about it. Why? Because the whole situation has become a mess. At that time, the ulama, like Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, Sheikh al-Hajuri, in Yemen, and likewise in Saudi, they were given fatawas telling the people not to go out. I remember Sheikh al-Hajuri at that time in Yemen, week after week, day after day, he'd be talking about the issue. Alhamdulillah, a lot of people, they left the mudaharat, what they were doing, they say around 70%, but you're still too late. They had caused so much problems, there was so much bloodshed, there were so much problems. And that time, the takfiris, they were calling these mashayikh Umara al sultan Ulama al sultan They are rulers of the, or they are scholars of the rulers, scholars of the rulers. They'll be belittling them, taking the mick out of them. Why? Because they were telling the people not to go against them. They weren't defending the rulers, rather they were only telling the people to go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sunnah. If you open up Sahih Muslim, it has a whole chapter, Kitab al-Imara, the chapter of leadership. And, if you, and you can find so many hadith of how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa informs us to be patient, not to go against the oppressive ruler and to carry on being patient. And as the hadith have preceded, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us clarity and to give us 